Hi, I'm Vivian Williams at Mayo Clinic. Walk the aisles of just about any grocery or drugstore and you'll see rows and rows of vitamins. So how do you know what ones are actually good for you? Here to talk about three vitamins in particular, vitamins A, E, and D, is Dr. Donald Hensrud, a nutrition expert from Mayo Clinic. Thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here, Vivian. Thank you. Why don't we start out with uh, vitamin A? Is it good for you or bad for you? It's good for you in small amounts. Beta carotene is another nutrient that's converted into vitamin A. And we've known for quite some time that people who eat the most beta carotene and have the highest blood levels have lower risks of certain cancers and heart disease. But when people put it in supplements, they did some studies, they found that smokers and former smokers who took supplements of beta carotene actually had a higher risk of lung cancer and dying from lung cancer. So in food in small amounts it's good, but in supplements we don't recommend either beta carotene or vitamin A. Okay, so no vitamin A supplements. Where can you find it in food? You can find it in colorful foods. Carrots, for example, have beta carotene in. There's another compound called lycopene that gives tomatoes its red color. So many different types of fruits and vegetables in particular have beta carotene. Okay, and how about vitamin E? I've heard that vitamin E is good for you because it may ward off the effects of Alzheimer's and heart disease. But then again, there's some data that says that's not necessarily true. So what's the story on vitamin E? We've known for quite some time through basic science or test tube studies, animal studies, and even population studies that vitamin E seemed to be protective against heart disease. But then the randomized clinical trials, which were the best studies available, did not show any benefit. And in fact, there may be some harm from vitamin E. So we don't recommend vitamin E supplements anymore either. What can it do to you, vitamin E, if you take too much? Paradoxically, it can increase the risk of heart disease and mortality. Probably not a huge increase, but nonetheless, it does not provide any benefit. What's very important, a recent large medical study showed that of the best studies, those people who took vitamin A and vitamin E actually had the highest risk of dying. So another good reason not to take vitamin A or vitamin E supplements. That would be a very good reason, <laughs> risk of dying. No vitamin E, no vitamin A. Let's move on to vitamin D. I know that's good for you to help you avoid osteoporosis because it helps you absorb calcium. But it also has some other benefits. Talk about those. We've known for quite some time that vitamin D is necessary for good bone health to prevent osteoporosis, rickets in children, and osteomalacia in adults. That's just a small amount. Now we know that for good bone health, and for other health conditions, such as type 2 diabetes mellitus, uh, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, and perhaps even mu multiple sclerosis, that more is probably a little bit better. It's difficult to get all the vitamin D we need from the usual sources. It's the sunshine vitamin, but we don't get a lot, and we have to be concerned about skin cancer. Fortified foods have vitamin D, but we don't get all that much. So a supplement of vitamin D is probably a good idea. And how much should you be taking? Well, the adequate intake is anywhere from 200 to 600 units a day. Some people suggest that 1,000 units a day or more may be optimal for good health. And so a supplement of 1,000 units a day, or people can take 50,000 units, that sounds like a lot, but you only take it once or twice a month, and that may benefit health. I should go back to vitamin A and E and say the amount in a multivitamin is probably fine. So if people are going to take a supplement, a multivitamin is probably a good idea. Calcium, you mentioned that, and vitamin D are probably the best ones that people can take. Now, how do you know when you go to a store and you see the wide array of the types of vitamins you can buy, how do you know which one's good? I mean, as far as the quality of the pill itself. In terms of quality, it's really hard because there isn't as much control as there is in pharmaceutical drugs. So it's kind of a buyer beware market. However, there are a few supplements that are good in terms of their effects, a few that are bad, and a whole lot that don't make a hill of beans worth of difference. <laughs> so if people stick with a multivitamin, D, and perhaps some calcium, those are probably the best that they can, they can uh, do. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Hensrud, for joining us today. And thanks for being here. If you want more information about vitamins, what's good and bad and what really doesn't help, go to www.mayoclinic.org. We'll see you next time at Mayo Clinic.